I want to welcome you to a special holiday pod for Israel. We have Shavuot coming up soon, and we have Dr. Erez Soref with us, and we're going to be digging into what is Shavuot, or as most people call it, Pentecost. What is this all about? Where do we find it in scripture? And what are kind of the parallels we find between uh, thousands of years apart, you know, these different events in scripture? That's right. So, hi, everybody. It's wonderful to be here and uh, so excited to ramp up the um, as we're coming up to the uh, Feast of Weeks or Pentecost. And we've been talking about, we've been thinking about the parallels between the Sinai event, the giving of the Mosaic Covenant, the giving of the law, actually, mm-hmm. on Sinai, and Acts chapter 2, the descending or the coming of the Holy Spirit and the creation of the community of followers of Christ, the church. So some amazing parallels, we've been talking about that. Wow. And so part of the context of this is in Jewish tradition, according to rabbinic tradition, That's right. uh, the law was given on Mount Sinai on Shavuot. Pentecost, on on Shavuot. Pentecost. And, and that tradition comes from the book of uh, Exodus 19, in verse 1, because it says there that on the third month of uh, when the Israelites came out of the land of Egypt and so on and so right. on, so uh, they came out on the, fir- the middle of the first month, right. the 15th of the first month, and then 50 days after would be the third month. And mm. so that's kind of the, uh, the reason that it's uh, believed to be in Pentecost or Shavuot. Right. And, um, you know, in, in Exodus 19, we see something very unique. God is coming to Moses and says, Moses, tell the people to prepare mm. because in three days, I'm coming down, I'm going to meet you and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something that I've never done before. I'm going to come down from heaven to earth to meet the people and mm. to give you the, um, you know, the covenant. And so um, how do you prepare to meet God? And Moses is telling the people, sanctify and purify yourself and wash and so on and so on. I mean, prepare your hearts as well as your external appearance mm-hmm. um, to meet the living God. And then on the third day, when God appears, there's a great voice and thunders yeah. and you know, great fire that is coming mm. down from heaven and, and kind of eating the top of the mountain. The people mm. were very much scared off and then kind of went off and told Moses, you go, you go, we're, we're too scared. Yeah. Now, I think it's, it's fascinating to see that, um, you know, on the count from Passover, from the first Sunday after the Passover, hmm. 50 days, seven weeks plus a day, the, right. the count of Shavuot, um, on the 40th day, when Jesus was resurrected, after the resurrection, Jesus told the disciples, wait in Jerusalem. Hmm. Something great's going to happen. Prepare yourself for something dramatic. Right. Again, the parallel to the Sinai event. And then in Acts chapter 2, we're reading there was this great voice, mm. like, like a great wind. It wasn't a great wind. It was like a great wind yeah. that even people outside have heard. And then everybody comes in, some looking around, and then there's those tongues of fire. Mm. But it's not eating the mountain. It's kind of spreading. And then on each one, it was an individual symbol that each one was indwelled with the Holy Spirit, wow. and um, you know this dramatic event of the creation of the church began. Mm. Yeah, and that's such a beautiful parallel between the two, and we see a lot of other parallels as well. Mm-hmm. Um, when we talk about that, this event, we had all nations acts actually, you know, really captures this in a beautiful way. You had Jews from every part of the that's world right. that have been spread throughout the nations, and they're all coming together for this festival, and they were witnesses to this event. That's right. So Shavuot, or the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, is one of the three uh, occasions a year, or holidays a year, appointed days yeah. every year, that the Jews were supposed to physically come to Jerusalem. And in yeah. fact, you know, many would come on the Passover and stay on to Pentecost. And so Jerusalem was filled with Jews, Jewish people from all all over the world at that time. Now we're talking about the time of Jesus. So the picture that's portrayed for us in the book of Acts depicts people from all over the ancient world, all around uh, Jerusalem and Judea, all over to Rome. And that it seems like, I think, the text is wanting to draw our attention to Genesis chapter 11. 
Mm. In Genesis chapter 11, when God is mixing the languages for the first time in human history, different languages, different people groups, people are ever more separated yeah. than ever before from God and from one another. So further boundaries. And over here, we see the reverse. Right. So each reverse. one, I mean, God is speaking to each person in his mother tongue. Right. And you know, those 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 Galileans, the simple people yeah. that were speaking, I mean, they didn't study it. And they spoke perfect Cappadocian Bunch and of country Arabic boys. and <laughs> yeah. Roman, whatever. Right. It was perfect language. Yeah. So people were wondering, it's like, how come? How, yeah. how do they do that? Those are the simple Galileans. They couldn't have studied it. Yeah. So it's net, definitely a supernatural event that God is saying to all the people on the planet, I am here. I want to bring you back. The message is for you. You can hear it in your heart language, which has been largely the task of the church ever since in the Great Commission. Hmm. And it's it, it's amazing as you dig, there's just so much here. Because just even thinking of the language that's written in Genesis, they were of one, like they were one, one together. And, yeah. and uh, even God said, whatever they're seeking to do, uh, they're going to be able to do it because they're at one accord. Well, in Acts, you see the same language used. They gathered together with one accord. And there was that unity, but see, different. One was a unity of we're going coming together for man's glory, mm-hmm. for man's power, for man's might to reach heaven. And the other one was submitted to God, saying, we're coming in obedience to God's word to get to his promise. Exactly. To wait for God. Exactly. And, and again, the, the passage in Acts, I think, is also significant. And in a sense, also, I would, I would even call it prophetic in the sense that um, Peter is mm-hmm. giving this first speech. You know, he's talking to all the Jews. He say, hey, everybody, they're not drunk, mm. but this is God's act to bring the message of the Messiah. He is the one whom you have rejected, yeah. Yeshua of Nazareth. Mm. And he is the Messiah that's promised to our forefathers and to us. And the amazing mm. thing is, you know, how, you know, thousands of people kind of are saddened when they hear it, and they say, well, what should we do? Yeah. What should we do? What can we do now? Mm. And he says, well, repent or uh, reverse your heart, so to speak, mm-hmm. return with your whole heart to God right? and believe in Yeshua and, and show it practically by being baptized, yeah. baptized in, in water. And what's amazing is that we see that 3,000 people are responding and they're all being baptized in the over 120 cisterns and pools that mm. are around the temple. So quite an endeavor, quite a, uh, a an outbreak of faith wow. among the Jewish people. And from then on, we know that in the following chapters, the message is going out to all the nations of the earth. That's amazing. So this was, they talk about, this is the birth of the church. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the birth of, of mm-hmm. really this movement empowered by the Holy Spirit, empowered by God. And that reverse of Babel, you know, one was everyone was coming together for man's glory. Now all of a sudden, they're spread out, separated, Dispersed. divided, and now we're being united exactly. by God under God's ways instead of man's glory, God's glory. Wow. It's so beautiful to see all this interwoven story through thousands of years. For sure. And, and you know, I think uh, also worth mentioning, I know that millions probably of our viewers and listeners, uh, millions of believers in Jesus all over the world are fasting and mm. praying for a revival among the people of Israel, and so we are both, uh, first of all, humbled that Amen. other believers are going to pray with us for our families, mm-hmm. our friends, our neighbors, our people, and uh, of course, we are joining this fast and this prayer in those days, and um, you know, kind of like, again, the Jewish people, we read about thousands coming in a, in a single event, yeah. you know, in Pentecost and the following day, but um, really, throughout most of the last 2,000 years, Hard to believe, but the Jewish people, those that we read about in Acts chapter 2, yeah. we have largely been an unreached people group with the gospel. Right. And so, um, again, closing of the circle, as we said, all those inner connections, mm. now the gospel is going back among our people in a strong and significant way. And we've been just been talking a few minutes ago about the fact that we see in the la- particularly the last couple of years, a great hunger among our people for spiritual yeah. meaning and people turning to uh, Yeshua, to Jesus. Uh, people are con- contacting us and want to hear right. more. So just uh, we, we wait for this day that 
uh, more and more of our people are uh, going to come to the Lord and Amen. eventually all of us as a nation. We're already seeing the first fruits of it. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were just talking this morning about just some of the reports of the numbers that we're seeing mm -hmm. of people watching our videos, the number of subscribers. And this is in Israel. We're talking it's in the in millions yes. you know, every month. Yes. So it's, it's amazing to see this movement already beginning in our mm -hmm. time right now. This is not looking forward to the future exclusively, although... Greater things are yet yes. to come. That's the crazy part to mm -hmm. me. But when we look at the law given on tablets of stone, you know, we, we, we celebrate that during this time, the law was given. And now we see this parallel of the Holy Spirit given. How, how do these things correlate together? So we've been, uh, yeah, we've been chatting about that. And uh, maybe you can read... Um, in Jeremiah 31. Yeah, know, we actually have the scroll here opened right. up exactly to the spot. Uh, this is a, a beautiful section. It says, for, the, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after these days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall they teach each one his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I'll remember their sin no more. Jeremiah 31. Amen. And so, just want to say a big thank you for all of our listeners and viewers that are praying for our people at this time. Yeah. And um, God is doing great things, but great things are yet to come. Amen. And so, Father, in this time, we just come before you and, and just ask that you would open the hearts of your people all around the world and all of our listeners who might be hearing this podcast. I just pray you'd open their hearts as well. If, if, uh, if their heart is of stone, that you would make it of flesh, that you would write your law on their hearts through your Holy Spirit. Uh, bring awakening to salvation, Lord, and help for more to see the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua, our King. And Lord, that... Uh, you would bring great salvation in our day, Lord. Help for us to be prepared for this great harvest that's coming. And Lord, we just thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness in this, in this time of harvest. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Amen. If this touched your heart, will you help pay it forward to reach others who need to hear this message? Partner with our team to bring the gospel to Israel and the nations.